Welcome to the DHS program video series on the contraceptive calendar. This video is meant to be used as a supplement to the contraceptive calendar tutorial that is available on the DHS program website. This training video is for DHS data users to understand how the contraceptive calendar data are structured within the individual recode datasets that are available on the DHS website. This video focuses on the dataset. It is important to know there is another video in this series that provides an explanation of how the calendar is structured and walks through how it is completed during the interview. Please watch this video first before continuing to ensure an in-depth understanding of the calendar data. So let's quickly review the structure of the calendar. In a standard questionnaire, the calendar looks like this. With the year of the survey at the top, each year has one row for each month. And for each month, data can be entered into two columns. Column one is births, pregnancies, and contraceptive use. And column two is discontinuation of contraceptive use. On the left side is a list of codes for column one and column two that are used to populate the calendar. As we can see, this is a completed interview, and column one will go from this vertical column to a horizontal string of data. However, before we go further, it is important to note that the string variable will not be identical to the response codes as they appeared in the calendar. These responses are recoded to provide a standard coding across surveys and phases of DHS. For example, the pill is coded as code six in the questionnaire but is recoded to code 1 in the individual recode dataset. Here are the two columns as string variables. If you're using Stata, the variable name for column 1 is vcal underscore 1, and column 2 is vcal underscore 2. Though it's important to know that these variable names are different depending on which statistical software you are using to manipulate the data. Here is a look at the variables with the character positions in the string and the month and year visible. The character position and date are not in the data set, but are helpful here to understand the string. Each string variable contains 80 characters, allowing for up to 80 months of data to be represented in the string. Although the character positions are numbered 1 to 80 from left to right, to read the string chronologically it must be read right to left because the most recent data is on the left of the string. So why are there blank characters in the string? For vcal1, the variable representing the first column of the calendar, the months after the month of the interview will be left blank. As we know, the interview took place in September of 2015, and we know the data will cover the calendar period, which is the year of the interview, up to and including the month of the interview, plus five full years preceding the year of the interview. The calendar period, plus the blank months that represent time after the interview, will add up to 80 characters. In vcal2, the string will be mostly blank, except for the months that correspond to a month in vcal1, where a contraceptive method was discontinued. There are several variables that can help you understand the dates and length of the calendar. v017, is the century month code for the first month of the calendar. V018 is the row of the calendar representing the month of the interview. For this calendar, V018 equals 12, because the calendar does not start until the 12th position in the 80 character string. V019 records the length of the calendar period. In this case, the length is 69 months, meaning 69 of the 80 characters in this string have codes and are not blank. V019A is the number of columns used in this dataset. In certain countries and in previous DHS phases, there could be columns used that may have data on unions, migration, source of contraception, or other events. In this dataset and in a standard DHS7 questionnaire, there are two columns. Now that we know there are 80 characters in each string variable, that the calendar is read from right to left for chronological order, and the standardized coding does not match the questionnaire, let's read through this string example to understand the reproductive and contraceptive events that happen in this respondent's calendar period. As we read through this example, remember that the contraceptive calendar tutorial is located on the DHS website and has a table of the standard codes. That is the table we will use to interpret these data. In January of 2010, the beginning of the calendar period, 
there was no contraceptive method being used by the respondent, nor was she currently pregnant. In September, the respondent became pregnant. After three months of pregnancy, the pregnancy ended. In February 2011, the respondent started using an injectable. And in July, she stopped using the injectable because of health concerns or side effects. In April 2012, the respondent started using the pill. And in November, the respondent stopped using the pill due to health concerns or side effects. In 2013, the respondent started using periodic abstinence, also known as the rhythm method, in September. In January of 2014, the respondent discontinued periodic abstinence because she became pregnant. In October, after nine months of pregnancy, the respondent gave birth to a child. In February 2015, the respondent started using the pill and was still using the pill in the month of the interview. Remember, each column of the calendar is stored as a string variable in the data set. Each string variable contains 80 characters. The data must be read right to left for chronological order, and the standardized codes are recoded and will not match what was directly put into a questionnaire. Additionally, always check to see if the country or phase of the survey you are working with has country-specific codes or columns. This video provided a brief overview of how the contraceptive calendar data are stored as string variables in the datasets. If you have any additional questions, please visit our website or the DHS user forum.